Sometimes you have to leave your post. Not that I do it very often, but things come up. Do you wash your hands? Well, yeah. And I won't report you. Uh -huh. All right, okay. On time. Do I at least have time to take a shower? for Marla all evening. It's not like her to be late. You've been here a while. Didn't I see you just walk in? Where's Marla? It's right over there. Well, she was there. When you see her, send her to me. I um, have something for her. What would that be? The name of a good uh, divorce attorney? Heard your message on the machine the other day. Well, you must have misunderstood my message. Yeah, that was probably it. Sorry, my friend is still in there. <laughs> There's another bathroom up here. A couple, actually. Is that right? Yeah. Um, down the hall to your left. Great, thank you. Sure. Hey, she's out if you want it. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. Wasn't that Marla Belmont's husband? Can you imagine me working for your wife's company? with my husband. Okay. His firm does some work for Pan Pacific. What are you doing here? I came with my wife. 
You didn't come with your wife. Yeah, I know. I came looking for her. My flight was late. She didn't wait for me. She didn't come to the party. She's gone. She's never gonna bother you again. <gasps> Give me another one, please. Not for me, thanks. I've flown enough for one day. Plus, it's almost 11. It's a 12-hour turnaround out to Boo's camp. Ten more minutes. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna go. Time to hit the sack. And I still have to call Steve. I'll see you in a bit. With her. She's gonna lock you out of your room. Where are you gonna sleep then? She's my best friend. She's just worried about me. You're a big girl. You can make your own decisions. I've proven not. <laughs> Come on. I wasn't such a bad one. Just a married bad one. Come on, let's get to bed. Give it up. What? Huh? You know I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna leave Marla. <sighs> sure you are, Ted. You don't believe me? No, I believe you want to. That doesn't mean you're going to. I mean, how many times have we discussed this? Usually when our clothes are off? You can't afford to divorce her. She's the one with all the money. That's what I mean. Plus, she owns the company that we work for. You know, Liz, I really did mean everything I ever said to you. What time would it be at the airport tomorrow? Eleven. Less than twelve hours from now. Captain Beaumont. Telephone. Thanks. Yeah. Don't you have a flight first thing in the morning? What would your boss say? Screw my boss. You never seem to be able to anymore. That's a new low, even for you, Marla. Is that why you called? To emasculate me long distance? No, Ted, I don't need to deball you. You do that well enough on your own. But I have some papers for you to sign when you get back. I feel I was much too generous with our prenuptial agreement. Is this something we really need to discuss on the phone? I don't plan to divorce you, Ted. But I've drawn up a new one just in case, you know, that you decide to divorce me. Listen to me. As much as I thought the prenuptial we had was less than fair when I signed it, considering you own the goddamn company I work for, I think I'll just keep it like it is. I think not. You do realize that we're suffering budget cutbacks like all the airlines. We'll be laying off and shifting personnel this coming month. According to our deal, you can't fire me. No, but I can change you to another position. I can make you a co-pilot. I can ground you just as long as I find you another position. Any position. I checked with my lawyers. Check with yours. Oh, and there's that matter of your own personal little flight attendant. Better tell her to start looking for a new pilot to service. You must have a Ph.D. in being a bitch, Marla. Remember that. I'm sorry. I thought that was mine. Oh, I think that one's probably yours. Unless your lips are covered with sin. Sin is my lipstick. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought this was going to be the usual doll layover. Layover, that's um, pilot talk. It's very good. Oh. It's when you spend the night, fly out the next day. Oh. And those are dull. I always heard about these wild orgies, you know, stews and their coffee, tea, or me. Well, that must be for the unmarried crew members. Really? And what did the married crew members do on a layover? Well, we sit in the bar. We talk to 
beautiful women. And we try to figure out how to get out of our rotten marriages. <laughs> Is that what my husband's doing right now? He's a pilot, too. We flew up here, flies his own private plane, twin engine Cessna. Do you know anything about small planes? Yes, I do. I know about all planes. Ooh. Even jet fighters. Ooh. <laughs> I find it so frightening. Is it dangerous? Well, no. Not if you're careful. Oh. Is he instrument rated? Um, I believe so. But, you know, Dex drinks so much, he's usually flying before he's flying. I hate to fly with him. Usually we have to go somewhere I take a commercial flight and meet him, but sometimes he makes me fly with him. Well, it's the safest form of transportation there is. I always think today he'll crash. It's cold, I know. <laughs> but it would make it so easy. I doubt that Dex would see it that way. Dex would be dead. He's not happy either. He just won't admit it. I don't think it's possible to have a marriage where one person is miserable and the other person is happy. Do you? Well, if the happy one is made happy by making the other one miserable. Well, here's to being married.
Have you ever fantasized about getting rid of her? <laughs> Have I ever not? I've come up with 10 or 12 great ways to murder my husband. But old Dex keeps on ticking, huh? Sometimes I think I could, though. Sometimes I really think I could. What about you? Do you ever think you could murder someone? Someone or my wife? No. I don't think that I could. Go ahead, answer it. I've got to go anyways. Dex will be getting back from his meeting. Yeah. God, you never lasted this long when we made love. It was in the bathroom, Marla. Oh, I forgot. You like it in the shower. <laughs> so who is it? It's nobody. I'll bet it's that chipper little stewardess that you inducted into the Mile High Club. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't even have the style to bang someone who worked first class. You had to screw someone in coach. Jesus, Marla. You keep calling me just to brighten up my dreary night away from you. No, darling. I just wanted to make sure you got off to bed. We're still in the bar. Especially when you're responsible for 200 passengers on my airline. Don't worry about me. Not even once? Hmm? Just for a second. Too bad. Because I do know the perfect murder. What's that? What do you care? Hmm? Wait a minute. How do I get in touch with you? Why? What for? Mrs. Davenport, please. They were here last night. Already? What time did they check out? Look, I need to get a hold of them some way. Can you give me a number and a... No, I understand. Thanks. All right, where is he? Huh? Huh? Russ is going to report him. I should have called him this morning. He's okay. Well, nothing a little black coffee won't fix, I'm sure. You know Russ has been waiting for this chance. Russ is an asshole. Unlike our tardy captain. Hello. Good morning. Ted, where the hell have you been? I forgot to leave a wake-up call. It used to be your job. Jesus, wake-up call. You don't even look like you slept. Russ is just waiting for the opportunity to report you. Uh, excuse me. Hi, thank you. That'll be the 10th row down on the right, 10 a.m. Got my whole damn shoe. Look at it. The leather is gouged. No first class. The captain's not even in the damn cockpit yet. Can I take the your drink coat? Because there's no first class. God, what a great flight this is gonna be. Have a nice flight. Fat chance. <sighs> That's another satisfied customer. I'll announce we're ready for takeoff. I mean, we are ready for takeoff, aren't we? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard flight 622 from Los Angeles to San Diego. Sorry for the delay, but we'll be taking off in just a few minutes. Good morning there, Russ. How's it going today, buddy? I've already filed and cleared us from the tower. You've already done that? That is good. That is just what a good little co-pilot's supposed to do. Have a drink, it'll relax you. I'm fine. I prefer bigger planes. I knew that asshole wasn't gonna have the front tire on my plane fixed. I knew it. Well, if you knew it, we should have had tickets. We wouldn't have had to run across the tarmac to make this flight. That asshole's gonna pay for these shoes. 400 bucks from Italy's gonna pay for them, sure as shit. 
Hey, how you doing today? Good. Pretty good? Yeah? No, I could use a co-pilot. Where are you going? To jump out of the plane. To the bathroom. Where else? If you see a stewardess, tell her we need a couple more drinks. And jump. You like to fly? All right, you come on up and help me out. See you later. Bye. Hey, are there any stews on this plane? Uh, yeah, hold on one second, sir. I'll get you one. Enjoying the flight? Are we gonna get into San Diego on time? Yeah, I think we're gonna get in about uh, 10 minutes early. Then I like it. Lisa, 10A is looking for you. He's been looking for us since he boarded. Don't worry about it. Sorry, I didn't go to the bathroom on your schedule. Next time, don't take me on your business trip. Maybe I won't. It'd be nice to do without all the ragging all the time. <laughs> so what do you think? Well, it's interesting. You hate it. I didn't say that. Yeah, interesting is what people say when they hate it. Dex thought my stuff was interesting, too. That's why I got this loft. Moved my studio out of the house. It's different. It's unique. <laughs> different, unique. Special? These are all words used to describe the retarded. Let me ask you something. Hmm. Is that me? Hmm. There. It is now. I'm working. No, don't! Jesus. Mm. Did he do that to you? Huh? God, I hate him! Does this have anything to do with me? No. Why? Would you do something if it had? Do something? You mean kill him? Yeah, I mean, kill him. Yes, yes, I think I could do it. I know I could if it means getting away from no, him. No, you can't. Yes, I can! No, you can't! You can't for the same reason, the only reason I don't kill my wife. We get caught.
I've thought about this, all right? And we can't do it. We're too obvious as suspects. There's too much motive. Okay? Aaron. Yeah. But I want to. I have to. I'm going to. I have loved him. He comes after me. He'll always come after me. No, he won't. Not with me there. You'll be with your wife. Try to stop me. Aaron. 
I am not going to lose you. Now, I want to hear every detail about this thing before you go ahead and screw it up. Well, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet. What do you mean you don't know exactly? I thought you had the perfect murder. I do, but that requires two people. Two people who both want someone out of their lives. Tell me. Have you ever seen strangers on a train? Hitchcock, right? It's about these two men who meet. Total strangers. They don't have anything in common except that they both want someone dead. So they decide to swap murders. Because you see, usually murderers know their victims, or at least they have a motive for killing them. But by switching murders, they're each killing someone they have no connection with. And they have absolutely no motive for killing. So it makes it impossible for the police. So all one needs is a convenient stranger. Yeah. you guys get away with this? No. Why not? Because one of them doesn't go through with his side of the deal. She's gone. She's never gonna bother you again. Excuse me, stranger. Isn't it possible uh, your wife just decided not to go to the party? No. It's her company. She's on the board. She's very involved. 
She was all over me about making sure that I showed up. But you didn't notice or suspect anything until you came home. That's right. I just assumed she'd gone on ahead. So tell me, Mr. Beaumont, how are you and your wife getting along? Like shit. But I'd still like to know where she is. Or if something happened to her. How about you? Wouldn't you like to know? We'd both very much like to know where she is. Well, that's good. That's why I called you. So do something. But we are. That's why we're questioning you. It'll help us tremendously. Anything that you have to tell us. I already told you everything that I have to tell you. I was out of town. On layover in Los Angeles. On layover in Los Angeles. I came home. She wasn't here. So I changed and went to the party. She never showed up. I came back here. Once again, she wasn't here. No message on the machine. None of her friends know where she is. And her car is still in the garage. And you found blood in the bathroom floor. Well, I assume it was blood. I think it is, too. And you touched it. I touched it. I didn't think that I was disrupting a crime scene. We don't know that it is a crime scene. No, we don't. Technically, a person can't be reported missing for 24 hours. And you did say your wife and you weren't getting along. So. Yeah, that's right. I did say that. But she wouldn't not go to her own party. And she wouldn't leave. This is her home, for God's sake. Everything is hers. Unless something happened to her. Unless something happened to her. Let's keep in touch with one another. And if she doesn't turn up by tomorrow night, we'll file an official report. And try not to touch anything else in the bathroom. We may need to send a forensics team in tomorrow night. Don't you worry. I won't touch a thing. I don't want to cloud this investigation. What do you think? Stinks to high heaven. Well, if he did or he's cool, he sure doesn't think he can get caught. If he did something to his wife, We'll get him. Yeah, if he did something to her. Absolutely. You can have your old run starting tomorrow. I just thought you'd want some time off. No, no. I appreciate it, Hugh. Tell you the truth, I'm going a little crazy sitting around. I keep coming up with all these, these images about what might have happened to her. Goddamn police haven't come up with anything? No, nothing. It's been almost a week. I'm going to call Harv. Now, he knows some people in the DA's office. You should be able to squeeze someone's balls in a vice. We'll get something going. So hard to believe. Right, yeah. You don't want to get the room wet again. Don't sit in my chair this time, okay? Anyway, like I said, you can have your old run back starting tomorrow. Russell was filling in for you. He's going to be quite a pilot, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's good. I mean, I trained him, didn't I? Ted, you still seem distracted. I want to help you out. But I don't want to make a bad choice. No, you're not making a bad choice. Hugh, look, I, I need this, all right? I need to stay focused. Look, I'll be fine. If anything goes, you know, wrong, you'll, you'll have Russell there, and, you know, I'll get some more time off. Okay. You hang tough. See you there. I'm sorry. That's my fault. My my head was in fog. Hey. Where's the men's room around here? No matter how many times I'm in this building, I can never remember. Um, it's it's down there, around the corner to your to your right. Thanks. You all right, fella? Yeah. Like I said, my head's in a fog. Whoever designs these places must love the idea of the suits rolling around the hall, pissing in their pants. You are a devil, girl. Just a devil. 
It is so full of lust and desire. It's depraved. I love it. I hope everyone has your sick appreciation. If they don't, they weren't invited to the party. Uh, I better check on the caterers, make sure everything's on schedule. I once had an opening filled with obnoxious critics and dealers and nothing but cheese and crackers. Talk about a near riot. <laughs> I thought we ruined it that day. Can't ruin something that's not finished yet. Besides, I thought it made a statement. What are you doing here? I thought we agreed not to see each other for a while. I ran into your husband today. What? Where? The Pan Pacific offices. I told you, he does some work there. It's um, overflow from another firm. All right, whatever. My point is that's twice. The party, now he works in the building. It's hardly a complete stranger to me, don't you think? And how many other people were at that party whom you don't know? Wouldn't know if something happened to them today, tonight, tomorrow. Look, about Marla's disappearance. Who? I don't know any Marla. Shit. So what are you saying? You're not going through with your end. Just like in the movie. Life imitates art. Hard. It is. I never would have thought. I mean, we were, we were all but divorced. Well, you can't be with someone and live with someone and not feel anything. Especially when something like this happens. Well, that's the difficult thing. We don't know what happened. I mean, it's the not knowing that's hard. Is she dead or alive? Is she okay? What did the police say? <sighs> not much. Without me as a suspect, they don't have much to go on. The only person who really knows what happened is the person who did it. Are you going to come down for dinner? Uh, I may just grab a bite to eat in my room. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, maybe you'll want to get a drink later. Maybe. Well, uh, will you call me if you change your mind? Okay. Hello. What are you doing? Lying here without you. Cold. Alone. Empty. Aaron, look. Ted, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the other day. I don't want you not to be with me. I want to be with you always. Even if it means we could only be what we've been. 
what I did. I did for you. And you don't owe me anything. Ted, you hear me? You don't have to do it. One more time. The only thing I can't eat is the chef salad, and I swear I'm starting to look like one. What about Ted? I thought you said he wanted to stay in the hotel by himself. We'll just call him when we get to the restaurant. If he wants to join us, fine. Suki sushis, please. How you doing? Hey, how's it going? Good. I'm here to get one of my bags. Forgot to pick it up when we landed. What flight was that? Uh, 127 from San Diego. Yeah, that's about an hour ago. Should be right up against that wall there. We don't move them to the left luggage area to our flight train. Great. Thanks. Yo, Captain. Got your claim stuff? Uh, yeah. There you go. It's a duffel bag right there. Thanks. You got it, Cap. Let me ask you something. Do I know you? We met? Sure did. One minute ago when you came in. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Yo, Captain? Got your claim stuff? Very good. You know, this is long-term parking. You've only been here 15 minutes. Yeah, I know that. I missed my flight. I can't get another one out for a month. Okay, but, but I've got to charge you the minimum for 12 hours. You know, if you're only going to be here an hour or so, they have regular parking. Only cost you for the hour. Yeah. Well, it doesn't cost as much over here, but that's why they call it long-term. If you're only going to be here for a short time, you really ought to check out short-term parking. Thanks.
box. Well, he is a big boy. He can change his mind. Come on, let's go. Come on. Give me another one, please. One white wine. <laughs> Nothing for me, thanks. I wish you were at dinner with us. We went to this really cute Japanese place. How are you? Hey, this is Francine. Oh, nice to meet you. Looks like I'm flying. He's drunk again, so I called the supervisor. Bottom line is, Ted is grounded. Ah, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. It's probably for the best. It's the right thing to do. I don't know what's wrong with him. plane load of passengers just because you're messed up over your wife? You are pathetic. Oh my God, are you okay? Let's go. You haven't been yourself lately. Everybody's been worried about you, even Dorian. Dorian. <laughs> number one fan. Your number one fan. Look, everything's gonna be okay. Invite me in. Look, I don't... We don't have to do anything. We can just sit together and hold each other. wake you up. No, no, no. I'm not going to deadhead back on my own flight. Okay. I'll see you in San Diego. Bye-bye. What? <laughs> All of a sudden you don't enjoy the delicate perfume of a good pan of tele? That should be illegal. Where's a cop when you need one? Stupid. Come on. You got a heart on against Beaumont, and you're letting it get to you. He has to be involved. It's my woman's intuition. The same intuition that was working when you picked those two jabrones to marry? Look, whatever happened to her, he's in the clear. She was seen up and walking, looking healthier than you at 7 o'clock that evening by the cab driver who dropped her home. In a pharmacy kid who delivered her prescription in nylons at 7.30. We definitely got Beaumont covered until his plane landed. His cab driver dropped him home at 8.15-ish. Hmm? He then shows up at the party in tucks and bow tie a little before 9. And it takes at least 20 minutes to drive over there. There's 20 minutes. Yeah, at the most. And that's to enter the apartment, kill her, dispose of all traces, get the body out of the building and stashed without being spotted, change wardrobe, and get back to his building in time to have the doorman call for the cab to take him to the party. That's not likely, not probable, that's not possible, unless this guy's the Flash. Excuse me. You're so protective. Maldonado. 
Yeah, friend. We'll be right over. Looks like we might have found the remains of Mrs. Beaumont. Let's go. Delivery. This is November 3813 Charlie, requested taxi clearance. 3813 Charlie, clear for taxi.
Those great hands of yours, they're going to be very busy after the showing. Oh, I hope your enthusiasm is contagious. I just wish that asshole you call a husband was here to see how well it is going. That asshole I call a husband is in Los Angeles I'm on busy. business, yeah, making no. money mm -hmm. to pay for all of my things. Sure. All of my supplies. I know, he can afford it. You're terrible. <laughs> of course I am. Or I wouldn't have the hoods but a charge what I do for half the things I sell. Aaron, it's for you. It's line three. Hello, this is Aaron. It's done. You're now a wealthy widow. Thank you. I had gone up to the cabin. It's the only place I can really be alone and think without any intrusions. Oh, we don't even have a television there. It wasn't until I phoned Jillian this morning that I found out everything that had happened. How you call the police and... Yeah, that's right. I called the police. I mean, Marla, you just disappear without a trace. Is that it? Oh, well, who knew it would end in a manhunt? Ted, I didn't even think you cared. What do you mean you don't even think I cared? I mean, for God's sake, Marla, you just up and you disappear like David Copperfield. Is that it? Huh? I mean, shit. I mean, what about that blood in the bathroom? I didn't realize... Huh? It, it was my time of the month, all right? Which is probably one of the reasons that I reacted the way I did. The important thing is she's home and she's safe. You just up and you go. Is that it? I didn't know what to do after that woman showed up. What are you talking about? What woman? What woman? Erin Davenport. She came up here to my home telling me all about your affair together. I don't know. I, 
thing about any affair. Come on, she told me everything. All about you two. About, about how you asked her to leave her husband. About how afraid she was of what you might do. I don't know any Aaron Davenport. Well, based on my conversation with her, she sure as hell knows you. Look, <clears throat> I think you two should just calm down. Take it easy. Get some rest. This type of thing puts a strain on everyone, Mrs. Beaumont. Your husband was very concerned about you. We're just glad it all worked out okay. Times like this is great when the call turns out to be a false alarm. Yeah. <clears throat> well, thanks for the coffee. Any more gut instincts? Yes. Hey, hey. Here. Marla. I, I, I think that we are acting irrationally here. I mean, I don't know who this woman is, Her but... husband works for my company, for God's sake. They told me how worried and frantic you were. I'm sorry about that. I, I really am. Marla. I need time to think. Talk tomorrow. The day after. She be accepting calls. The private plane crash of local San Diego attorney Dexter Davenport is now currently under investigation by the FAA. An official determination is yet to be reached, but pilot error is the unofficial verdict. Have you ever seen strangers on a train? It's about these two men that meet total strangers. They have no connection to each other. Except they both have someone they want dead. And they decide to swap murders. But you see, most murderers, they know their victim. Or at least they have a motive for killing them. But by switching murders, they were both killing someone they had absolutely no connection with. And no reason for killing. So it makes it impossible for the police. Mr. Bowman, would you open up, please? Mr. Bowman! What? Detective Maldonado, would you open up, please? Mr. Bowman, you want to open the door? Theodore D. Beaumont? Actually, it's T. You are under arrest for the murder of Dexter Davenport. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you.
Of course you knew them. Davenport worked for your wife's company, oh, for please, Christ's please. sake. Please, please, do you know the size of that company? Do you? And Mr. Davenport was brought in by another company that works for Pan Pacific. Mrs. Davenport says you were very upset when she ended the affair. You threatened her. You threatened her husband. That's why she felt compelled to have the liaison at the cocktail party. I never threatened anyone. Well, you made her nervous enough to hire a private investigator to have you watched. Yeah, she didn't want you making a move without her knowing about it. I saw him follow her upstairs. You're not going through with your end of the deal. Here's to being married. Man has a lot of personal problems. What I did, I did for you. Just like in the movie. It was a slime ball, is what he was. He definitely knew Dex. They were talking in the office just the other day. Life takes art. Because I do know the perfect murder. The P.I. tailed you all over in Los Angeles the other night. To the airport. Saw you steal that van. Saw you drive it out to that location. Had no idea what you were up to. He put it all together when this happened, gave us his report. He showed us out there. We found the buried parachute, the spade. Forensics is pretty sure that's blood and hair, and I think. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna belong to Davenport. Where do we stand? On a scale of one to 10? Minus three right now. Now the PI's testimony is most damning. It gives him a great case for premeditation. Look, I know the guy is a typical low-life scum sucking keyhole paper. Good detective. We'll have the arraignment, I'll talk to the DA, we'll know better where we stand. Where we stand? You gonna stay with me tonight, pal? I'll make a motion for bail at the arraignment, but I don't know. You're telling me that you can't get me out of here till the trial. This is first degree murder, boy chick. Look, uh, it'd really help if Mrs. Beaumont could be there for you before the judge tomorrow. I've tried to call her. Well, I'll uh, give her a call myself. I'll get back to my office. God. Freedom. How's it taste? Fucking great. Yeah, well, they suggest you go take a nice shower, grab a good meal, then meet me at my office, because you're going to be back in by tonight. Let me get this straight. I'm out of there because they screwed up my middle initial? The warrant was issued for a Theodore D. Beaumont and your Theodore T. It was a bad arrest. That was just bum luck. I'm sure they got a judge issuing a new warrant as we speak, so if you don't get a hustle on, they're going to be picking you up with that new warrant before you hit the curb. My office, no later than six. I'll come in with you. Hold on, hold on. Right, right here. There you go. You're not going to believe this. Oh, my God, released on a technicality. I bet you can just guess where he's going.
Well, well, well. Here we are again. What are you gonna do? You shoot me? Won't that ruin your game? I want you to leave. <laughs> I tell you what. Let's talk about your plan again. Remember your plan? How perfect it was? This one was better. Your plan was never to have you kill Marla. You just wanted me to kill your husband, then you were gonna send me away for that. You were fucking setting me up from the start. Yeah, I guess I was fucking you. And I was setting you up. They're gonna find out about it, you know. What? They're gonna find out about what? That you wanted me to kill your wife in exchange for murdering my husband? Huh? They know about our affair. Everybody knows. And they know you killed Dix. And you did kill him. You did. And I have a splinted alibi. So you see, there isn't anything for them to find out. Because you already know it all. So why don't you get the fuck out of here before the police arrive? Or you called the police? When did you do that? Right now. And I'll tell them that you came here to intimidate me. To try to get me to lie for you again. Do you understand what you did to me? Huh? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I killed a man. I beat him so badly that his blood and his brain splattered all over me. Do you understand that? I understand. I do. No! Don't you dare. I could kill you right now. I could squeeze the life right out of you. You know why? Because I've already done it. Because I've already killed. And I didn't find it that difficult to live with myself. I didn't find it that hard. Ah! Oh! Where did you come from? His attorney called, told me they let him out on some kind of technicality. Okay, as soon as I heard. the two of you all along. You were both in on it. I guess it had to be, huh? You stay away long enough for me to buy into it. Shit, you didn't go to that cabin, Marla. What'd you do? Did you stay right here? Aaron and I have known each other for over a year now. Actually, we met at last year's Christmas party. Dex did some work for me back then, too. And you two black widows had this beauty. Got rid of both your husbands in the process, huh? Oh, poor Ted. Who made a pact with his lover to kill me. <laughs> but unfortunately for you, I always come out on top. Hmm? Especially in this marriage. Dear. Ah! Oh. Oh. What are you gonna do now? Huh? Now that I know. <laughs> know what? <laughs> Call the police. Call. Yeah! 